Manfred von Richthofen, the Red Baron. He's the most famous fighter pilot of all time. In World War I, he downed 80 Allied aircraft before he too was shot out of the sky. But who downed the Red Baron is an enduring military mystery. For nearly a century, a Canadian has been credited with the kill. But it was, in fact, an Australian who brought down the German ace. Which Australian is a harder question. The Somme in France. Today it's peaceful and picturesque. But in April 1918, 1,000 Australian soldiers were doggedly defending this section of the Western Front against the last great German offensive of the war. And in the skies above, the battle raged daily. No pilot was more famous or deadly than Manfred von Richthofen, the German aristocrat known as the Red Baron, who had 80 kills to his name in his distinctive triplane. Why did he paint his plane bright red? It was a tactic. He wanted to make sure his men knew where he was, A, to protect him, but also he wanted to make sure that um, his victories were counted by people on the ground. War historian Norman Franks has written several books on the life and death of the Red Baron, a legend who inspired troops in the trenches and the German people at home. So he was the perfect poster boy. They liked to advertise their heroes and they had postcards which you could buy and of course it was like buying pictures of the Beatles or uh, Buble or someone uh, famous. <laughs> So who did kill the Red Baron? For nearly a century, official credit was given to Canadian pilot Captain Roy Brown. Unless the bullet turned around in the air and came back, it couldn't have been, couldn't have been Brown at all. Norman Franks is convinced an Australian shot down the greatest fighter pilot of all time. And then literally a second later hit the ground. But this battlefield mystery is only half solved. Norman's trying to uncover which Australian fired the fatal bullet. Was it 24-year-old gunner Robert Buey, a fisherman from the central coast of New South Wales? So he saw the bullet hit the plane? Yeah, yeah. yeah. His bullet? His bullet. He's, he believed it. His bullet, yeah. Or was it Sergeant Cedric Popkin, a 27-year-old carpenter from the Tweed on the Queensland-New South Wales border. You just knew it as fact that yeah, he I, shot the Red Baron. I, well, that's all I've grown up knowing, you know. On April 21, 1918, 1,000 Australian troops were manning this section of the front. As the mist slowly lifted, some were relaxing in their trenches while others were queuing for lunch in one of the field kitchens just hidden beneath the tree line. When word came through that a German plane had crossed Allied lines and was heading their way, gunner Robert Bowie, who was on cooking duties that day, was ordered to drop the dishes and man a machine gun. Well, on this ridge here, Sergeant Cedric Popkin swung his machine gun down the valley floor. Just moments earlier, in a fierce dogfight over the front line, the Red Baron sees an inexperienced Allied pilot break away from the pack. He gives chase, breaking his own rules. He never chased uh, Allied planes over the lines, which he did on this occasion. He never got down that low. He never pursued an enemy. He had two guns which were giving him problems. He should have gone home. Canadian pilot Captain Roy Brown notices the Allied plane under attack. He dives from the clouds, firing a short burst before being forced to pull out, which, according to historian Norman Franks, means Brown couldn't have shot down the Red Baron. 
He only fired to distract the German. He never claimed to have shot down the Red Band in any event. So why do so many people want to see Brown be given the credit for this? Well, the propaganda it's, it war? sounds logical that the RAF killed the Red Band. It's much better than some Tommy in a trench, you know, with a cigarette in his mouth. <laughs> The Tommies in the trench are actually Australians, including Robert Buey and Cedric Popkin, who jumped to their guns when told a German plane was coming their way. I could hear the planes coming. Then round the bend of the river, they saw one of their own. And on its tail, a flash of red. Can you imagine their surprise when they realised this was no ordinary German plane? This was the Red Baron himself. So both planes came screaming down the river here. And as he was jinking and weaving and going to and fro down the river, his actual wheels were touching the water on occasions, which is pretty dangerous. The two planes continue along the river, but Manfred's guns jam and he's now under heavy ground fire. Everybody was firing away in, from slit trenches and little posts over there with machine guns. So it was mayhem? Well, yeah, everybody's having a go. The Red Baron decides to turn back. That's when gunner Robert Buey fires head-on at the German triplane. And moments later, Sergeant Cedric Popkin takes his chance, firing at the plane's right side. Came back round over, yeah. up over, over here, firing from over here, and hit the ground. So this is where the great Red Baron, the man who had 80 kills to his name, died. He died here, yeah, exactly right. And his final words? I am finished. I'm dust kaput. He knew he'd had it. He was passing out, but uh, within seconds he was a down mm. and he knew that it was the end. It may have been the end of the Red Baron, but it was the beginning of a century-long military mystery over who brought him down. He was very confident that he'd shot the Red Baron down, mm. but he... he uh, I don't think he ever sought any sort of recognition, but he always... Yolanda Stewart is Sergeant Cedric Popkin's daughter. Her dad lost his leg in the final months of the war. And while he rarely spoke about the Western Front to Yolanda and her husband, Jim, he was clear on one thing. He was Bear confident like that, that uh, he... Uh, had shot him. Had shot him down. In your heart, there's no doubt who no, killed the Red Baron. No, 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 no doubt whatsoever. And who was it? It was Sergeant Cedric Bassett Popkin. <laughs> I believe my dad never lied, never boasted, never skited, but he always said he'd done it, and I believe that. I 100% believe it was him. Kelly Buey is one of Gunner Robert Buey's eight children. Did he go to his grave? adamant that oh, yes. he was the one? Yeah, definitely, yep. Nearly 100 years later, it's a controversy, so I suppose if we could come back in 100 years' time, it'll still be a controversy. We could be having the same conversation. Well, well, it won't be us. us. us <laughs> here, no, us sitting here today won't solve it. <laughs> Robert Buey died on Anzac Day 1964, all his life maintaining that he'd shot down the Red Baron, citing a telegram sent by one of the British field generals as proof. Gunner Robert Buey, mm. this is following from General Rawlinson, begins, please convey to the 53rd Battery, 5th Division, my best thanks and congratulations on having brought down the celebrated German aviator. And that's all the proof you need? That's all the proof I need. But proof is clouded by the fog of war, and there was no forensic investigation of the crash site. As soon as they realised who it was, of course, the souvenir hunters were there ripping the place apart, taking shreds of uh, all this stuff, bits of pieces, a bit of tubular. The Australians didn't leave a lot behind, but what did survive was the rotary engine of his Fokker DR1. 
The Australians really got themselves going on it and ripped the thing asunder. Those even Aussies. <laughs> even Aussies. You wouldn't believe it, would you? <laughs> I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> But our soldiers showed von Richthofen great respect in death. His body was taken to the Australian Air Base and after a basic autopsy, he was buried the next day at Batong Cemetery. Australian airmen served as his pallbearers. This incredible vision from April 22, 1918 shows that he was given a funeral with full military honours. But most important to this debate was the autopsy. While the paperwork supports Buey's claims, the autopsy supports Popkin. Von Richthofen was shot from below and from the right. Do you think the fatal shot was fired when he was sort of in the air, just coming up over this He bridge? just sort of cleared the region coming towards here. A lot of fire coming from over there and mm. over here, but he was only hit once, one bullet, from the right side. So he's got to be someone over here. So who do you think killed the Red Baron? Well, logically, it could be Popkin because he had the best chance. He knew what he was doing, had the experience, and he could lead a target. And well, he was in the right place. He was in the right place. Hmm. But it's still going to be anybody. I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to say 100%. I can't say 100%. <laughs> Nobody can say 100%. Hello, Yolanda. Hello. I'm Kelly. How are you? And this is her husband, Jim. 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 These two Australian families have so much in common. But up until now, had never met. That's right. In my heart, we, we, I believe my dad done it. You, have, you believe <laughs> your dad done it. And that's, that's what it is. That's, yeah. that's correct. That's <laughs> Kelly, Yolanda and her husband, Jim, meet at Coolangatta on the New South Wales-Queensland border, a world away from where their fathers waged war against the Germans on the battlefield. So who shot down the Red Baron Germany's World War I ace almost 100 years ago. If the war historians don't know for certain, what chance do we have? But we do know it was an Australian, <laughs> and it was one of your dads. That's right. It was an Australian, it was a ground gunner. It did not come from an aeroplane. Well, I say we toast to your dads <laughs> and to the Red Baron. Uh, the same here. Same here to everyone. <laughs> Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.